is on my butt. Okay. Uh, now it's recording in progress. Yeah. But who and, will get the recording? Yeah. Yeah, you will. Did you also um, open the waiting room so people can go in automatically? Uh, how does you how do you do that? Okay. Thank you for all your patience right now as we deal with some obviously technical issues. My assistant, Olivia, who usually does this, is on maternity leave. Okay, here's my hosting too. Okay, I've got to find the waiting room that lets people in. Well, what I'll do is so fun. I'll just keep letting them in, okay? Yeah, Ju Judy, my uh, colleague Brenda, she will let everyone in that uh, comes in the waiting room. Uh, maybe you can give your uh, the the introduction. Yeah, and I'll stay I'll stay on it here too. So if you need anything, uh, we'll use the chat. I want to welcome everybody. You're you're muted again, uh, Judy. <laughs> I think you muted everybody, so I'm going to keep watching this. I want to welcome I want to welcome everybody to the virtual learning lab presented by Medical X Advanced Simulation. Claudia and Silvana are on your screen, and we're going to turn it over to them in just a few moments. This is presented by a member of our corporate roundtable. They have been uh, doing these for several years now in the summer. Uh, they're very popular. We have over 130 people registered for today's event. And if you have questions, we ask you to use the chat box and we will monitor the questions and make sure they get answered. The Learning Lab is one hour and we appreciate your uh, attendance. And I'm sure we'll have a great one. And I've known Silfan for a long time and it's good to see him again. And I'm gonna mute myself, Silfan, and you take it away. Thank you, thanks, Judy. Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are. Uh, I think most of the viewers are from the US today, so it's still daytime. Uh, my name is Sil Fontang. I'm the president of sales and partner at the Medical X. And um, yeah, very, uh, very honored uh, that uh, the Society of Simulation in Healthcare has uh, hosted our uh, learning lab. Yeah. And uh, thanks you, Judy, of course, for facilitating everything. Um, I'm here with me with my beautiful colleague, uh, Dr. Claudia Welson. Claudia, can you tell the people a little bit about yourself? Yeah, hello, everybody. Thanks for attending our learning lab tonight. And well, tonight, because here in the Netherlands already 8 p.m. So my name is Claudia. I am I'm a medical consultant and product specialist in Medical X, and I'm going to co-host our learning lab today. So far. yes, great, thank you. And it's not just the two of us today. We also have uh, another colleague helping us in the background, uh, Brenda. Brenda Pereira. Maybe you wanna come here and say hello as well. Hello, everybody. <laughs> yeah. So Brenda will be monitoring the chat box all the time. If you have questions, uh, yeah, don't uh, don't hesitate. Just type in the question, and then we will uh, try to answer it as uh, soon as possible. Uh, however, uh, do not unmute yourself because that will uh, distract us a, a lot. Um, but at the end of the 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 learning lab, uh, there's some uh, time to do some uh, Q and A as well. Uh, so, without further ado, Claudia, would you like to present your uh, Presentation first. Yeah, I would like to start with a quick uh, PowerPoint presentation. So we're going to change, share my screen in the other computer. And then after that, we'll come back to Medical X Studios and we're going to do some hands on together. All right, great, thanks. Okay, I hope okay. everybody can see my my screen right now. 
Let me just take care just of some technical care. issues here, just a minute. Yes. Okay, so welcome to our 2024 SSH Summer Virtual Learning Lab. Um, today, oh, I cannot pass my slide. Yes, now it's working. So our topic for today is enhancing trauma training with simulators, integrating technical and soft skills. So maybe Silfon, uh, as our president of sales, would like to make a quick introduction of Medical X, our company. Yes, thank you, Claudia. So for those who don't know us yet, Medical X is a Dutch company. We are based in the Netherlands. We are specialized in the design, development, manufacturing, marketing, and distribution of simulation products for uh, medical training. Uh, our company has been established since 2010, so this will be our 14th year. And uh, well, what we want to achieve is to provide healthcare professionals simulation-based solutions and cutting-edge technology simulators uh, that are not only cost-effective, but also time-effective to uh, be able to teach and train clinical skills without harming actual real human patients. Okay, that was great. Thank you, Silvan. So a quick overview of our agenda for today. Uh, we're going to make a quick introduction about the latest findings in simulation-based trauma training. So just review what the literature has been saying about trauma training. And after that, we're going to showcase some of our trauma training solutions. So to demonstrate how, how practitioners can use some of our simulators to immerse themselves in trauma scenarios without compromising patient safety. So a uh, brief introduction on our subject for tonight. Uh, so why trauma? Uh, trauma injuries uh, are still an important healthcare problem and one of the main leading causes of death worldwide. So it's basically 9% of global mortality and that cannot be ignored, it's a lot. So uh, when we are talking about a civilian environment, uh, these injuries can result from traffic collisions, drowning, poisoning, falls, burns, and violence, of course, unfortunately, causing more than 5 million deaths annually. And uh, we are not talking, of course, just about deaths, but also uh, temporary or permanent disabilities, what can bring important consequences on the patient's lives. So with that being said, it's of course crucial to quickly identify and manage trauma injuries. And for that, uh, proper training and a systematic and rapid approach should be applied. So here I, I'm bringing a name that all of you know quite well. So the, the most famous systematic approach to trauma. So the ETLS, the Advanced Trauma Life Support Course, uh, it was created in 1978 by the American College of Surgeons, and it's currently taught in over 60 countries. And this course has used a variety of simulation modalities to teach trauma management. And since then, all other trauma management courses have arisen as well. And here I brought two of them uh, because some of our simulators, they, they are made also for first responders and EMTs and paramedics. And here I brought two courses that uh, are that has first responders as their target audience. So the pre-hospital trauma life support and the international trauma life support. Okay, so when we talk about clinical simulation, uh, clinical simulation is started to support clinical training by taking into account the patient safety but it also offers some other benefits, such as the opportunity to repeat a simulation as many times as needed. That's something that real life uh, sometimes doesn't provide us. And also to train a great variety of technical and non-technical skills. So I, I would like to dip um, in these in this two terms because they are the, the main goal of this presentation tonight. So when we talk about technical skills, we are talking about uh, triage, primary and secondary service, uh, basically the techniques and the treatments uh, the, the students, the healthcare professional need to know, need to have the skill to achieve 
uh, that goal. And the non-technical skills, also called soft skills, uh, focus on communication. And this communication, uh, we are talking about communication among the team members and communication with the patient as well. And the leadership, the management of situation and decision making. And in this context, for the clinical simulation, it's important to highlight uh, the importance of the clinical simulators. That's going to be our tools. So just to highlight some of the, um, the common terms we, we're going to see from now on. So clinical simulators are classified according to the concept of fidelity. That is basically uh, how close that simulator is uh, to reality. So we have low fidelity, medium fidelity, and high fidelity simulators. The low fidelity, they are anatomical representation of parts of the body that usually they can be used to train simple tasks and acquire basic motor skills for developing those tasks. So for example, uh, a small suture pad that you can use it to practice suture. You're practicing only the skill itself. You're not practicing on the patient or, or with a human being or anything. You're just practicing the skill. And then we have the medium fidelity simulators. These ones will integrate low complexity software programs, allowing uh, some physiological variables to assess knowledge during the, during the training. So for example, uh, a CPR trainer that you can also, you can have feedback on the, the CPR quality, the, the frequency, the rate, um, the, the number of ventilations, all this, this feedback that you can have from the simulator. And last, uh, but not least, actually the most important one, most used nowadays, the high fidelity simulators. Uh, they're life-size mannequins that are going to integrate uh, the mechanical devices together with the computer technology to train advanced techniques and skills in handling critical situations and all kinds of other scenarios as well. I'm, I'm focusing here on critical situation because this uh, webinar, this learning lab today is about trauma, but of course it can be used for any kind of training. And this uh, the simulation can be used, of course, um, for individual training, but also for group training. And it's common that trauma team training focus on those uh, non-technical skills, like we can see here, the leadership, the communication between the team, the decision making. So uh, let, let me just admit one more person here, yes. And so the, the, the team can train not only their individual skin, skills, but also how to work with each other. And well, the integration of the simulation, the simulators and the medical student curriculum, residence training and continuing medical education as well has been strongly recommended by the American College of Surgeons. So it's, it's more than proved that enhances patient safety, reduces medical errors and performs a systematic evaluation of our various competencies. Okay, so we as a provider of medical education simulators uh, at Medical X, we are constantly following the latest discussions and publications in the simulation field to develop and deliver solutions that ad address healthcare educational needs. So for this reason, uh, today I, I would like to bring and uh, quickly share some articles that explore these topics. So we, we, we're not gonna uh, deep, we're not gonna dive deeply on those because we, we don't even have time for that. I'm mean, just bring like some articles quickly, talk about them. And of course I'll leave the, the references. Uh, in case you're you're interested in reading the article or you can contact me uh, personally if you want. So the first article I, I would like to take a look together with you, uh, it's, uh, it's an article published in, two, in 2015 that is focused on decision-making in trauma settings. So how simulation can improve diagnostic skills. So in this, in this study, they, they had 83 residents uh, from surgery, emergency medicine, and anesthesia, and then divided this 83 residents into 21 teams and submitted them 
to 10 scenarios of trauma. So in these scenarios, uh, those, those residents, they had to apply uh, their knowledge on the ATLS algorithms and, and treat these patients that are severely injured patients. And the conclusion, they, they come after all these this trainings with these groups, is that simulation can be used to provide teams with decision-making experience in trauma settings and improve diagnostic skills. So here we are not talking only about the treatment skills, but also the decision making, the, the diagnostic skills. So again, bringing the, the soft skills to the table. Here, a second one from 2008 uh, brings the, the current concepts in simulation-based trauma education. So it's an article more focused on the kind of tools that's been used nowadays, I mean, 2008, like uh, the, in the past 10, 15 years. So how they, uh, <clears throat> they combine uh, different simulators uh, to assess clinical performance uh, and to teach and reinforce essential knowledge, skills, and abilities. So they combine a number of specialty simulators in trauma and critical care because they've been designed to meet these educational objectives. So uh, the conclusion is that the, tech, the technology uh, is also being used to develop skills in leadership, in communication, in decision-making, all those terms that we've been talking about. This third article from 2014 uh, has, has the title Efficacy of Simulation-Based Trauma Team Training on Non-Technical Skills, a Systematic Review. So here it's, I selected this one because it doesn't, it, it doesn't approach only the individual training, but also the team training. And uh, it's, it's really nice where they come as a conclusion that the multi-professional trauma teams they all had positive reaction to simulation-based training of non-technical skills. And knowledge and skills improved in all the studies that they could evaluate because the systematic review, there was, was a, a few articles and, uh, and studies they could check and they, they all show improvements in knowledge and skills. So a significant, significant effect on learning was found after simulation-based training of the multi-professional trauma team in non-technical skills. In three of those studies, they, they, they highlight uh, how significantly increased the clinical team performance. Again, bringing the team, the team training, the working together as, as the main goal when training trauma. This is, was an article that it's not that common because it it talks it it shows um, and study in pre-hospital uh, care providers. Unfortunately, they are not that easy to find. So it's a study from 2016, a retrospective observational study, where they they presented. Um, a total of 129 um, pre-hospital care providers, so basically paramedics and EMT teams, and they they gave they gave two two different scenarios, two different trauma scenarios uh, to these groups, and they had uh, to make an evaluation uh, via self-assessment standard survey form before and after the presentation of the simulated scenarios, and. The questions were basically about how they perceive their own confidence levels. So, uh, a, a self, a, um, a self knowledge of of this, um, how how they how they pursue their confidence. It's uh, it's something that hasn't been studied before, and this study demonstrates that simulation training can improve the pre-hospital care provider's confidence in performing. So here, the, the, two, um, the two procedures they had to perform, that was tourniquet placement and needle decompression. But also, they, they said 
that the scenarios also also increase their ability to make critical decisions besides performing the procedures. So again, it was a kind of training that brought together the, the soft skills and the technical skills and improved their performance. And to finalize, this is the last one, but also the biggest, because it was a literature review published in 2022 uh, with the subject of simulation-based education in trauma management. So the authors uh, made a, a big, a wide research uh, using the term simulation, patient simulation, mannequin, uh, trauma training, education. And when put, all these words in their database, they found that more than 1600 publication. So we can see, and this is from 2022, so it's quite new. Uh, we, we can see how um, it's in evidence it's the, the, the subject is. So between this uh, more than 1600 publications, uh, they selected only 35 uh, following the primary criteria that uh, so these articles they had to be well basically from the past 10 years the study was published in 2022 so those articles they had to be published from 2010 to 2021 all of them had to focus on trauma training and they had to provide studies on how different simulation training techniques can impact trauma management and here, just to have an overview on these 35 studies, so what was the focus, uh, how, how they did those studies, what they used for that. So as you can see, most of the studies are not focused on medical students. They are also focused on, on the continuous medical education, so not undergraduated anymore, so postgraduated professionals. Uh, regarding the the um, simulators they use it so half of them use high fidelity but half of them don't so also different kinds of training probably so when you see the types of skill trained most of them were focusing only on technical skills a few on non-technical skills but a lot also combine both so technical and non-technical skills together uh, here is not the the scope of our summer lab today, but they are also uh, evaluating, um, checking how the evaluation pro process will take place. This is uh, something also important in these in studies. And uh, for less, the context on the simulations. Uh, so most of them, they were placed on uh, in hospital environments and not many of them in the pre-hospital environments, what is, we can say, a little bit weird, maybe, because when we talk about trauma, uh, we know that how the pre-hospital assessment is important. So it is for sure a field that, that still has a lot of space to have research. And here, just a few considerations. I won't bother you uh, for too long. So we can go for our hands-on, but um, I like it that they some of those articles, they brought together um, the conception of using mannequins and actors. So traditional simulators, uh, they try to imitate real patient simulators. <laughs> That's what the, the name said. But also this is the reason that why high fidelity mannequins and actors have been widely used. But of course, both High fidelity mannequins and actors, they have limitations. They have their own limitations. And that's what technology try to bring us. Uh, the technology try to allow us uh, for the development of other simulated methods that can offer solutions to those limitations. So uh, another good thing that technology brings, it's the... It's, a, it's possible to gather objective information directly from the simulator. Uh, providing a more objective evaluation method. Uh, some of those articles, they will they will say how how important it is to combine low and high fidelity training modalities. So low fidelity training usually being used to reproduce and practice technical skills. 
So such as array management, suturing, um, trauma, trauma approach, and the high fidelity uh, offering the possibility to train also non-technical skills, team training, and the scenario in a more uh, deep, deep training. And uh, standardized patient can also be used by uh, for both. Uh, of course, standardized patients they have the limitation. Usually, they are not. Um, the it's not possible to practice technical skills on them because they're actors. They are not real injured patients. But some some simulators can can bring these possibilities also for these actors. And um, I just brought two comments of two of the, the writers of the authors of these, these some of these articles that uh, data, he says that it's important that the simulations has to be adapted to the level and the type of education. So are you, are you uh, organizing a training for an undergraduated or postgraduate or the military trauma or for continuing medical education is really important that you uh, have your course um, matching the target audience you have. And it's also important, another author would say that you should focus on the type of skills you want to train. So the trend nowadays is try to incorporate non-technical skills within training courses to create a comprehensive trauma program. But of course, this is a second step once you already have your, your trainees uh, mastering the basic skills. And for trauma training, uh, since everything has to be trained, simulation methods that combine low, medium, and high fidelity training should be considered. So it's something important to know when you're uh, creating and updating your simulation center that you should have all these kinds of tools so you can use them all. So here quickly, just I'm, I'm going to leave the reference because I believe we're going to share this, uh, this video, this recording from today will be available. So if anybody would like to check any of these articles that we quickly introduce, uh, the references are here. And how we from Medical Wax can help uh, enhance the trauma training. So. These are some of the products we would like to show you today and yeah, how they can be used for all the trainings we just said. So we're going to come back to our Medical X Studio now. I'm going to stop sharing. And I think we'll, we are back. And we are back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claudia, for... Uh doing all this research and presenting uh, what has been done already. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, yeah, and it has been uh, yeah quite interesting to know what has what, what research has uh, already done and what research can still be done to improve uh, the training as well. Yeah. Uh, and as you said, oh, I think the camera is a bit blurry. Yes, <laughs> focus back. Yeah, so... Uh, so uh, uh, as you explained already, we, uh, we we as a company we also have some products made to uh, accommodate uh, trauma training mm -hmm. and uh, to make uh, yeah to make to make it possible for students to 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 learn about certain situations uh, before uh, they get to the real situation, mm -hmm. so they are prepared and know know what to do. Um, you need to have your hand gloves. <laughs> oh yeah, I think it will be good. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, well, why? Because uh, we we have uh, on on this side the woodpecking box uh, for woodpecking training, and uh, Claudia is gonna demonstrate uh, how uh, how we can use it. And it's always good to have some gloves on because we do have some blood with us. <laughs> That's true. So <laughs> yeah, although yeah, today? although although the blood is uh, is washable. Uh, still, it's good to have some gloves because then uh, then you don't have to wash it that thoroughly. Yes. Yeah. So we have here our wound packing box today. Trying to show to the camera. I hope you guys can see on detail. So what do we have here, Silvan?
uh, what, what happened with the video? We got disconnected. There's no more video coming from them. Someone should let them know. Selfon, this is Judy. Are you able to connect with uh, the video over there? Selfon or Claudia, can you hear me? If they're disconnected, they probably don't realize their video is gone. Can someone call them? Yeah, I'm on it. I'm with the staff. We're on it right now. Yes, hi, Judy. We, we got some technical issue. We accidentally uh, closed the, the Zoom call. We're going to get in right away. Okay, are you reloading the Zoom or you want me to reload it? Can you just click on the same thing? Looks like uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Are you back in, Sophon? Yes, I think I am. Right here, you uh, are. Can, yes, yes, we're back. Can everybody see him? Can you open the chat, the uh, Vanda? Then we can see if everybody is still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people are in a waiting room. I'm going to put them on now. Yeah, I accidentally pressed the, I probably pressed the wrong button when we want to <laughs> admit some people in. <laughs> and then we kicked ourselves out. But we're back. Um, so we were talking about the, the wound packing box. Yeah, yes. it said that they could, they, uh, so fun. It's, oh, I mean, watching the message box, people said they can see you now. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Thank you. <laughs> great. Thank you. Can you full screen Silphon's video? I don't know if we can do that. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, wound packing box. Uh, what what do you have to pay attention when we wound pack? Yes. So uh, first of all, I, I was saying that this is actually not a uh, such a low fidelity because this model is much more realistic that we are used to. So. It's, a, it's an important skill to know. It's ba it's one of the three pillars of the Stop the Bleeding Protocol. So one, one, one moment. Uh, can, you see us, can you see us in full screen? <laughs> yes, we can see you. Yep, I have you on full screen. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I, I saw that somebody asked about it. Yeah, I don't know why we can see. Okay. <laughs> We right. see someone, but um, not yes, a yeah, a dog. We're seeing a dog. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, <laughs> let's let's continue. Yes, again to the stop the bleeding protocol. So yeah, so uh, wound packing is one of the three pillars of the uh, stop the bleeding protocol. So if you have a wound that just applying pressure is not enough to make the bleeding stop. Uh, it's because like in this case, you have such a, a deep wound that you have a whole cavity underneath the skin, so it will keep bleeding. So maybe you have a vein open there or maybe an artery even that is gonna bleed even more and just applying direct pressure, it won't be enough to stop the bleeding. So you have to apply the pressure directly into the source of the bleeding that is this vein or artery underneath. So. And then we have a, a gauze, so you can, of course, if it's a big, uh, a big wound that you cannot see or feel anything, you can just try to pack uh, indiscriminately. Oh, it's bleeding, Claudia. Oh, it's bleeding, so we have to do something about it. And the idea here is, of course, you uh. touch... We have a video on, I think it's Sonia Cooks. If you can uh, take your video off.
Okay, so, uh, that should get you back in, Sophon and Claudia. Sophon, can you hear me? Oh, here he comes. Yes. Uh, here again. And we're back. At least we're not having the technical issues airlines are having right now. <laughs> That's true, Judy. Um, yeah, apparently something happens when uh, my colleague tries to reply some message. So we're going to try to reply using a second computer instead of the one with the camera. Let's see. Sure. <laughs> yeah, sorry for that. So we were bleeding. <laughs> yeah, we were trying to stop the bleeding. I think now we stopped it already. So the idea, of course, is to pack uh, the wound as much as you can, giving more uh, contact surface with the gauze. And some, some of these uh, gauze also have some hemostatic agents that can be used in a real uh, human being. But the, the technique is the same. So once you apply enough pressure and you don't see bleeding come anymore, that the gauze is not getting soaked anymore, you know that you, you found the, the bleeding source and you apply enough pressure for that. It's also important that the student knows he he has to keep applying pressure. It's not just release and then uh, go to, <laughs> to drink a, a glass of juice or something. Otherwise, the bleeding will will rise again. So it's it's part of the scenario. Uh, you have to wait at least three to five minutes to stop the bleeding, or at least until you you have um, an ambulance or someone to help you. Yeah, so it's uh, it brings a lot of realism having proper bleeding. It's not just the procedure itself. Yeah, so that bleeding really does add, add a lot to the training, right? Yeah, yeah. Then, then uh, training it dry, let's say. Yeah. You, you can see that when once you find in here, in my case, the tube that is providing the bleeding and you keep pressing and keep pressing hard and packing. So you found your video is stuck. Sorry? Sorry, the video is stuck. Is it still stuck? <laughs> We lost them again. I think it's with trying to do the two computers. I'll, I'll watch them to come into the waiting room again. I apologize for this. I think we've got, I think we're on a technology overlord, George. <laughs> That's kind of ironic since it's simulation training. I was telling before he came on, I was on PTO last week. And I took me four days to get home with the airlines. Claudia or Silfon, can you hear either one of us? Oh, shoot. Let's try another venue here.
I sent them two messages here, so hopefully one of them can see it. Can, uh, can you hear us now? Oh, I just sent you another message. Yeah, we can hear you and your medic your screen is up again. Can you hear us, Sylphon? Can you hear us? I think we are on. All right. Uh, are, are we back? <laughs> yep, you're back. Oh yeah, there's a, a technical issue with uh, with with uh, with one of the computers that keeps kicking us out. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, thank you for the ones that uh, stayed with us and bear with us. Uh, we will just uh, continue. Show must go on. So we have talked about the wound packing box. What do we have here? So here is the trauma leg. So it, it, it's another anatomical model for other kinds of training. So here you can see one, two, three big wounds. So you have a bullet entry wounds, a bullet exit wounds, a, a, a big uh, cut here. So as the same as the wound packing box, they can also bleed, but it has three different locations to bleed. And of course, it's much more anatomically uh, similar to a human being link. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, here besides, of course, so uh, I can see that uh, three wounds and three tubes. So we can make it bleed from all these wounds. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this trauma leg has, uh, like you said, a bullet entry wound, exit wound, a uh, big cut wound. So you can do wound packing training and it can uh, bleed separately as well. So depending on what you want to train, you can make, uh, make that bleeding happen. And... Um, mm -hmm. And and yeah, well, what about the tunicat? Can you tell tell us a little bit more about that? So, uh, because you can you you can have three different bleedings in each of these wounds, you can also make them uh, work in a different way. So uh, let's say uh, these wounds just applying pressure was enough to stop the bleeding. So I make a dressing here. Maybe this one was not enough. So I also had to uh, pack the wounds we've got like we just did. Now that we know the technique, we are also applying to the leg. But this one was too big. It has a big uh, artery, so it, it keeps uh, bleeding. Uh, I try to pack the wound. Uh, the, the gauze keep soaking all the time. It's not enough, so we are going for the tourniquet. So this leg can also be used to train the uh, tourniquet application. So the you I don't know what you can see from from your home, but uh the the leg is is it has a, a soft skin like uh, it mimics the the human skin and also uh the muscles and the bones. So when you apply the tourniquet, you really have the feeling that you are applying the tourniquet in a real human being. So you can practice uh how tight it should be, uh how what's the feel when you just turn. The wing glass here. It's starting to bleed now. Oh, that's true. So <laughs> let's just do the tourniquet. <laughs> okay. And you see that stops because when I apply the tourniquet, I'm also pressing uh, inside of the leg. So the tubes, the veins, they also uh, get squeezed and they stop bleeding. So it's a, uh, it wouldn't, although it's, just uh, um, uh, anatomical model. It's not a low fidelity simulator anymore. It's already a medium fidelity simulator that allows you to do a lot of different trainings and also run scenarios on those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. And and besides the leg, we also have an arm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> also an arm with trauma. Can you tell us a bit? Of the advantage of this arm, I'll take this. Okay, thanks. Uh, well, basically, is also a test trainer the same way as the leg with the same uh, three wounds, uh, bullet entry, bullet exit, and a big cut. Uh, with the difference, then it's on an arm, so you can also uh, practice how would you do the approach on an arm. 
and it has the hands uh, differently from that one that we don't have the foot uh, together. So when doing the, the first and second assessment to, uh, to, to, to the trauma situation and you are train, training the neurovascular assessments, you, you won't have the feedback directly from the simulator, but of course you have the instructor that can help you on that. So you can still practice the physical examination. So you, for example, I am checking uh, the color and the temperature uh, of the hands, of the arms. So then I, I can have feedback from the instructor. Ah, the, 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 you feel the hand cold, uh, the, it, it's, it, it has like a bluish color. Uh, let's say after I apply the tourniquet, something that you have to check, uh, first of all, is if you still have uh, visual bleeding come out. Uh, if you do, of course, the tourniquet needs more pressure, but also if you can feel the pulses because you shouldn't feel. And uh, before that, you can you could also check the capillary refill. You don't have the capillary refill in this model, but it's something that during the simulation, you also use, of course, uh, some of the, the instruction help. So they could say, yes, capillary refill, it's two, three, four, five seconds. So. Yeah, so it's, it's a more complete uh, training to get. Yeah, we, we got a comment from someone. Uh, someone tried to do stop the bleeding on the leg with a Foley catheter. And it said it worked like magic. Ah, okay, great. Thank you, Gideon. <laughs> yes. Gideon's the best, yes. Yes, but I can see that our trauma leg here is connected to something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you may have noticed before with the uh, wound packing box, I was using a squeeze bottle to make the bleeding, right? Yeah. And um, in this case, we are, have connected the trauma leg to the hemorrhage X. This is the hemorrhage X3, which has three output. And uh, the nice thing about this is, uh, how do we say it? Bleeding simulation pump. Yeah, bleeding simulation pump. <laughs> I always need some assistance with, with pronouncing this. And uh, with this pump, you can remotely control it with a, with a handheld device, could be a portable device, um, uh, could be a phone or could be a laptop or a tablet. And the good thing is that uh, then you can control three uh, outputs independently from each other and you can, can connect it to one uh, trauma device, but it could also be a three separate trauma device. It could be a device produced by medical X, or it could also be a device from another manufacturer as well. And just to show you quickly the, how the interface look like. Yes, uh, I'll show you here on the phone. I hope I hope it's a bit clear, yeah. So you can see there is a three, three, uh, the three, three output you can, you can click on it and then you can press uh, if it's bleeding or not, if it's an arterial bleeding or if it's a continuous bleeding. Uh, so it's a very handy and uh, user-friendly device to do it. Thank you, ladies. And uh, besides the Hammeras X3, we also have a smaller, the little brother version, the Hammeras X1. <laughs> yes, this little guy. And uh, we have made this, you have uh, mentioned during your presentation about standardized patients already. And this one is specially developed to, uh, for the standardized patient to carry with himself. So then he can uh, control the bleeding himself if we have a, a massive bleeding on the field. Um, and uh, the, an extra feature what it has is also not a small remote control with with the device itself so he can uh, secretly control it without needing a phone or... without needing a phone or a laptop or an instructor to control it yeah and uh yeah so quite handy and the, the idea is to be portable so of course this small one you can also connect it to just a, a small 500 milliliters, one liter of, of blood. So in a bag that you can you can place it inside of your, of your jacket and then you, you can have the, the simulated blood all the time. Yeah, that, that's nice. Yeah, so talking about the uh, standardized patients. Yeah, because that, that was something uh, that one of articles brought. Uh, they said that simulation uh, with actors with standardized patients has limitations. One of these limitations is those patients, those actors, they can, well, they shouldn't bleed during the, the scenario. So this is 
somehow there's a way that you can overcome those limitations for sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you can overcome those bleeding limitations. And also what standardized patient usually doesn't have is, or maybe they do have, but then it's not, it was an accident that happened before. It's an amputation. Yeah. And for that, uh, we also have wearables. This is, for example, a wearable, uh, well, amputation yeah. that you can wear on your knee, on yeah. your knee right? Uh, that you can simulate amputation or what you have is a wearable yeah, Me? so this is a is a suture su suture sleeve, a trauma sleeve. So you can of course also use it as a as a test trainer, as a standalone, just to practice uh, how to suture. But then you can bring this training also to uh, patients, so they can place this sleeve. It comes with some plastic uh, shields that protects them from the needle. So you can also practice soft skills communication with the patient, explaining the procedure to them. So it's a more complete training altogether. Yes, uh, Judy. Due to all the <laughs> due to all the all the commotion, we run a little bit. Uh, uh, how do you say it? We run run a little bit wide with the time. Is that okay? Can we continue, or do we have to stop uh, in three minutes? No. Why don't you go ahead and uh, at least finish your presentation and see if there's any questions. All uh, right. Thank. You. I yeah, do for see those a question here, if there's any wearable models, do you see that? Sorry? Uh, there's a question in the chat box if you have any uh, wearable items, models, wearable models. Yeah, wearable items. So so this is one of the wearable items that we have. Uh, the cut wounds is a wearable item that we have. But uh, besides that, we also have moulash that can be wearable as well. Yeah, and uh, yeah, for those who have to leave right now, my apologies, uh, what, what happened with the technical issues, you can leave, we will later on share uh, the presentation as, as for, for with everyone as well. But if you can stay, that will be great, uh, then it will take a few minutes more. Um, and then we can uh, continue and finish the presentation and answer some questions as well if there is. So for the ones who need to go, we fully understand and uh, thank you for being here with us. And for the ones that can stay a little bit longer, then uh, let's continue. Yeah. yeah, so talking about variables that we have, these are also like variable items, right? Yeah. We have a moulage kit that can do bleeding and some that, can, well, uh, that does not bleed. Yeah. Uh, that adds to the realism. You can put it on standardized patient, but you can also put it on mannequins as well. Yeah, so um, those are silicone made wounds. Uh, they are really soft, really thin, and with some special uh, skin glue, you can just apply to the uh, standardized patient skin. So it saves you much more time that you would need like special uh, specialist in makeup to make mm -hmm. these kind of wounds. So then you can have all kinds of, of different wounds for different scenarios in all different uh, skin tones as well. So uh, a white person, uh, a dark skin person, and also uh, something really nice that the, all you guys should know in case you need is that we also offer customized solutions. So here you're just seeing a few options that what we have, but if you want something that we still don't have, just uh, send us some pictures and then we have our team of specialists. They can make all kinds of wounds, especially for you, right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, talking about uh, putting the wounds on a mannequin, uh, some of you may know Medical X produce mannequins as well. So let's show the mannequin. <laughs> Yes, try to wheel him in. Can everyone hear us? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. So, uh, yeah, um, mannequin, uh, the mannequin 
the advantage is that uh, you can uh, attach limbs with uh, with trauma on it uh, that looks well, more realistic than uh, usually a wearable on a standardized patient because a standardized patient is a real life living human that usually have complete limbs, then it's really difficult to, uh, to simulate that. But in this case, well, we can really have amputated legs like Claudia showed you. We have arms with laceration wounds, uh, arm with various degree of uh, burn wounds. And uh, also on the chest, you see there's a shrapnel wound. Uh, there was a person that asked before about wearables. We showed some wearables, but also this chest can be worn by the mannequin, but also by a person as well. Nice, Ed. Thanks. <laughs> Trained train yeah. a lot for it. And it brings, of course, the, the high fidelity uh, that we, we just talked in our presentation. So from this one, you can also have a, a proper feedback directly from the from the mannequin, from the software. So you have the mannequin, let's say it's bleeded already 400, 600 milliliters. You can see in the software, in the patient monitor, that the heart rate will rise up and uh, you will decrease the blood pressure and uh, the patient can talk to you. The patient can start uh, having a, a, a paleness in their face, in their hands. So then you, you, you don't need uh, the feedback from the instructor anymore. You have everything directly from the mannequin. And it's also good for posterior debriefing later because you have all the step by step what you did in the scenario, but with much more realism. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yep. That, uh, well, actually, uh, thank you, everyone. This concludes all the products that we have that we wanted to present. Um, do we have some uh, questions from the audience? You can type in your question or you may also unmute yourself, uh, introduce yourself yeah. and ask the question as well. To run a bit of time, if you just want to speak directly to us, please do free. And then there is dead silence. <laughs> <laughs> If they, well, if so they are... you, you kept almost 60 people from the uh, almost 80 people on. So that was time well spent. Thank you. <laughs> thank thank, you, so thank Judy. you, Judy. So, well, if, if there's no more questions, then, uh, well, thank you. Thank you. Well, you're, you're truly, of course, welcome. Uh, if there's no more questions, then I really want to thank uh, everyone for being here tonight or today. Uh, having, uh, I hope you have learned something from us and uh, think about what what uh, what you can apply this product with. If you have more questions afterwards, then uh, feel free to contact us. I I think that um, Brenda, you already uh, gave our contact details in the chat, info at medical xcom or you can reach me directly, sulfon.tang at medical xcom uh, Brenda, maybe you can share those uh, emails again in the chat. And uh, also, of course, thank you, Judy, Judy Larson, for uh, accommodating this, uh, this, uh, this uh, virtual learning lab, giving us the opportunity to showcase uh, some of my products. Yes. And, uh, well, thank you, Claudia, as well. Thank you. Phone is already our second year in the, the summer learning lab. And... Uh going to be our third year in the IMSH Learning Lab as well. Hope to see you guys there in Orlando. So yeah, thank you so much for the Society of Simulation uh, for, for helping us and always giving us space. Well, on behalf of SSH and IMSH, I want to thank you for your participation and your commitment to us. And for all of those still on the call, if you're attending IMSH, it'll be our 25th anniversary meeting and Medical X will be in the exhibit hall. Will you be able to uh, see them up close and personal. So we welcome you and we look forward to seeing you in Orlando in January. Come to visit. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye.